The first step, if we want to try to have the Ramadan that we wish for, is we need to free up, you know, as much time as we can for Ramadan beforehand. So you need to plan ahead. Okay, your goal must be to plan ahead and to free up as much time as you can. So you need to think ahead of what's going to happen in Ramadan and what are the things that you can maybe do now to get them out of the way so that you have more time in Ramadan. So what does that mean? It means anything you're able to drop from your schedule that you can get rid of, things that's not really that necessary, those are the things you should be trying to drop out of your schedule to free up your time. Appointments, postpone them if you can. You know, if you, like, if you possibly can cut down on your work schedule, like if you work, if you can possibly take a bit more time off or cut down your work schedule, anything that's not necessary for you, uh, try to get it out of the way or postpone it. Like, same thing with assignments. If you've got assignments due, you know they're due in Ramadan, you try to get them due, you know, you try to get them done before Ramadan. Another very important point that really helps, and that is, if you can possibly spring clean your house before Ramadan comes. This is also one of the things that's going to save you a lot of time when Ramadan comes. A lot of people, as you know, they tend to spring clean their house before Eid. They waste many, many days in the Ramadan spring cleaning their house, where that could have been used, you know, doing Muraja'ah of the Quran, reciting the Quran, revising. So they, they, they burn up that time instead. So that's why if you can possibly spring clean the house before Ramadan comes. Because that way, sisters, the first day Ramadan comes and all that's required from you is to sit down and start, open up your mushaf and start reciting. Because you know everything's done. You, you feel your mind is free because you know you've done everything you need to do for the house. So all you've got to do is focus on your ibadah. So that should be what we should be aiming for. Another thing also as well here is the, is the eat shopping. My advice is, as I said, you've got a week and two days or three days. It's probably cheaper to get the clothes now than it will be after when it's Ramadan. So quickly go out, hit the shops and get those clothes now. So you save all that time and frustration at the end of Ramadan looking for all those clothes and matching shoes and all of, all of that what you know, people do. So let's talk about how we can simplify our Ramadan for ourselves. Let's simplify, first of all, our food. We don't need to have 10 dishes on the table. We're not going through a famine. We're fasting Ramadan. You know, like, okay, the first day you might feel a bit hungry, but by the third day, you don't, you can hardly, you can hardly fill your stomach because it's shrunk. So you really only, like for the family, you honestly only really need one dish. We don't need to do more than one dish. Okay, we've got to really change this mentality. Like, look at, subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu protect our health. A lot of us are studying, you know, a lot of the community suffers from health problems, from overeating. So if we can learn to eat like the sunnah, which is to fill the stomach only one third and to drink, you know, the rest of the, the, the stomach, is, the next third is for, for your drink and the last third is, to, you know, to breathe. Another thing is to try to cook for two days. You know, well, some husbands are fussy. But inshallah, your husband isn't. So if you can cook for two days, that is ideal. Because then you only have to cook for what? Like, you cook once, and then the next day, the whole day, you just got to recite Quran, do whatever ibadah you want to do, and you don't have to worry about preparing the food. All you have to do is heat it up, put your thought, and that's it. So try to do that as well. So that's your, with your cooking. Then besides that, your routine. You need to try to cut corners with your routine. There's a lot of extra things we place in ourselves we don't really need to do. For example, you don't need to polish your TV every single day. You don't need to polish every single piece of furniture in your house every single day. You don't need to scrub the bathroom down every single day. You know, some of us, we go crazy with our cleaning. We've got OCD. So let's all just calm down and realize we need to just step back, slow down, and start to give to ourselves in Ramadan. That should be our main focus, all right? We can always go and back to scrubbing the bathroom every day after Ramadan. But how about Ramadan? We just, you know, we can, you know, it's not going to harm us if we have a few bits of dust lying around. When nothing's going to happen, inshallah. Okay, sisters, so just whatever you can do to cut back for yourself, that's what you should be doing. To make yourself feel more at peace in Ramadan instead of feeling the stress that many people are feeling.